Hey, what's going on guys? I forgot my fancy microphone today, but I did not forget my sunglasses, so we're at least looking like a cop right now. At least that's what I was going for when I bought them. So, yeah, I'm looking in the mirror more lately, and I, I gotta tell you, like, uh, you know, for a few months now, uh, my the hair loss has progressed to, like, I'm showering and I'm seeing way too many strands of hair in my hand when I uh, shampoo and stuff. And I, it's finally reached, uh, yeah, like, enough time has passed since that started to where, like, I'm visually seeing how much more the hair loss has progressed. Uh, I mean, I knew it was, but you gotta wait, you know, eventually so much has to leave so it becomes noticeable. And that's kind of where I'm at right now, and, and I already knew this. I kind of figured, like, this year is really my last uh, year I could go without getting a hair transplant. Because I feel like if I waited... Um, any longer than that, it's going to be too far gone to do anything with. Um, my, you know, a lot of people I see, like, they start balding on, like, the crown a lot. I think mine will probably get there next, but, like, it's mostly just, you know, the sides of, um, creeping up. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm bummed about it, but it is what it is. My, uh, so, I, I was bummed because my, my dad had a full head of hair at 52, but, but on my mom's side, her, uh, one of her brothers, my uncle, he, um, he was bald on top. Her other brother, fine, full head of hair as well. So I, I somehow got stuck with those shitty jeans. But, um, yeah, I think maybe if I wasn't, uh, you know, doing all the bodybuilding stuff, I may, uh, it may have taken 10 more years to, uh, like, get to this point. But you're not going to have hair loss unless you have, uh, you're predisposed from your genetics to having hair loss. So if you take stuff but you don't have the genes to uh, lose your hair... Or you don't like the genetic expression to lose your hair, I should say, you're going to be fine. But if you do, it's going to accelerate the process. So, like, you might go bald 10 years sooner than you normally would have. Which, 10 years is a long time. That's a big deal. But make no mistake, like, if you have the genes for that, it, it's coming. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I made peace with all these things. Like, side effect-wise with gear, I, I still think I'm fortunate. Like, I have uh, like had a couple times where I actually felt a little bit of gyno. Uh, but aside from that, like, you know, nothing to any level a lot of other people deal with. I, I didn't really get the acne or any of that, but I, uh, you know, I definitely got the hair side effects. Um, everyone has one. Everyone has some kind of side effect they're going to experience more than others. Mine happens to be this, but, you know, other people could have a, a different story. Like, I, uh, like one friend of mine, he, he started taking testosterone. And he started getting, like, terrible acne, but, like, not on his back or his chest or his face. It was, like, on his shoulders for some odd reason. And he's, like, asking me what to do because usually I'm, like, an encyclopedia of basic knowledge on this stuff. But I didn't know what to tell him because I have never firsthand dealt with that problem. And it's um, a little bit more rare to have it that bad. So, like, I just, you know, it hasn't... I haven't been in a position to where it's interested me to educate myself on that. So I couldn't really give him good advice on that. And I told him, I'm like, I know a lot about many things, but that is not one of them. And uh, it sucks when, like, you have acne, when it's a, a hormone issue, because there's no amount of uh, scrubbing your skin and changing your sheets that's going to fix the acne if, you're, if a, a hormone disturbance is causing it. So, you know, if you're doing PCT or you're on cycle or something and it's flaring up the, the acne, um, something's got to get attenuated to with uh like the stuff you're taking there's no amount of changing your sheets or anything that's going to make that go away uh, it's not it's not like regular acne so i do know that much but uh like strategies to reduce it i'm not sure i know some people go to the extreme of like they uh they uh pretty much front load a bunch of accutane at like a very high dose and then taper it off and take it continuously for so long and that um has been proven to like permanently get rid of the acne but the issue is like i think you also are permanently left with like drier skin and stuff because of what it's doing to make that happen so there's a trade-off there but if you're if you're like having terribly terrible cystic acne that's like hurting and affecting your life and your self-esteem dry skin is a better trade-off than living with that so i get it but uh you know some people go through that like i think a notable a notable figure that's uh on that route is Sam Sulik, who, uh, like, you can see the primary side effect for him is definitely the acne. So, uh, that'll clear up. Uh, I don't know about the face scarring, too, because that guy has a bit of facial scarring from it. I have another close friend of mine that had, uh, 
real bad cystic acne. He had like facial. It looked like scarring because I don't I don't know if it clears up. Uh, to my understanding, you'd kind of be stuck with it, but I don't know if over time that goes away as your skin like has a longer period of time where it's in a, a good place. So I don't I don't know, and I, I haven't seen that friend. I, I talk to him all the time, but I haven't seen him in a lot of years now, so I couldn't tell you exactly. He lives up in Colorado now. I'm in Chicago, so it's not it's not down the street. But yeah, like I have very limited knowledge on that. But I I know a few things people do. I just I don't feel confident enough to be like to tell someone the piece of advice I'm giving them is the best one. I, not, not on that subject. But a lot, a lot of people will have side effects. And like with, the, uh, like with the hair loss, for example, I know a lot about strategies to implement to try and re- reduce or regain ground. Unfortunately for me, like regaining ground is not something that's really in the cards for myself. That's because the thing I'm doing that's causing the problem to be so bad is being on cycle trying to be a bodybuilder so the the thing that needs to be taken out to fix uh to to fix it would be the the gear but the the my goals and everything i'm trying to achieve that's not an option for me so uh you know what you're what you're left with there is it's like i could if i was a normal person and i wasn't doing any of this stuff and i was like yeah i'm going to start micro needling i'm going to take some minoxidil and all that yeah, I think that would have a more profound effect and you could potentially like gain a lot of ground back. For, but for me, however, like what, what I'm doing is pretty much throwing a bucket of water on a house fire, right? The gear, the gear is, is going to continuously making this an issue, but the, the things I'm implementing that other people might regain ground with, I'm just doing it to slow things, to slow everything down for myself. So, and, and that's what the main two things are, would be micro needling and minoxidil use. The micro needler is a bit annoying. I spent a hundred bucks on a little machine that uh, Derek from More Plates More Date sells. I think he dealt with hair issues, so he knows quite a bit about it. I, I trust his knowledge, and he seems pretty credible with products. So that's enough vetting for me to want to try it. And it's great. There's a lot of cartridges for it and stuff. The, the downside I don't like about the micro needling. It's not that it hurts, but um, it's like pressing on nerves in a weird way, where it makes you have to sneeze and stuff when you that you're doing it on your scalp. I know that's weird. It, that's a weird thing, but uh, it's doing something with your nerves that's like triggering my reflex to sneeze when I'm like doing it over here. So th- that's something I, I find very annoying with it. But I mean, that's who cares? You sneeze a few times. It's fine. But uh, yeah, so I do that. And I take minoxidil every day. I think if I wanted to be autistic about it, I could do minoxidil in the morning and then before bed. I don't want to, man, because the stuff's like a thick, yellowy, uh, sticky substance that stains everything. So it's better for me to just put it on at night and then wash it out in the morning than to put it on in the morning and have my head look all fucking weird all day. Because it's going to look, it's not really going to look right having that sticky stuff in the front of my hairline all day. And the whole point of regaining your hair is to like up, uh, keep your appearance um, looking fresh. Well, you, my appearance isn't looking fresh doing that, so, and I don't think anyone's would. So, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't want to do it in the morning. I think maybe I might be missing out on a little bit from from that, but um, yeah, I do those two things in conjunction, and I think either one works on themselves. But they've been studied and proven to like drastically uh, like increase the effectiveness when you do both together. So there's a lot of synergy with that. And that's what I do, and I'm just trying to slow down the hair loss, which I think it is, but I'm still losing enough to where it's coming off at an alarming rate. And when you uh, stop taking minoxidil, you pretty much have to stay taking it. You have to continue to take it. It only works as long as you take it, and it's kind of uh, it's kind of like rewriting the growth the uh, growth cycle of your hair follicles. So it'll cause the absorption will happen, and it'll it'll uh, cause you to start um, sprouting more hair. Uh, but you have to continuously keep taking it because it's only altering that growth process while you continue taking it. So if I were to stop that hair that grew, it would shed off. It would just come off. So you could see like, oh, that, that could be a downside where you're you're constantly in a, a like a vicious cycle of having to get more and more of it because you need to keep taking it for it to have an effect. And it's not like it has the craziest effect. I'd say it's pretty mild, but it's enough to make a difference. And if you're really dealing with like hair loss, it's the same with the people with the acne. Like that's the the better the better option to take. Just like having drier skin is the better option to take for the person with acne. But yeah, I'm just slowing it down. And uh, 
I, I would like to get the hair transplant um, at the end of this year. I, if I go to Tijuana, I saw that it would cost like $3,800, which is, you know, that's a lot of money, but it's also not super expensive for what I'm getting done. So uh, I, I want to do that. You know, I'm not going to fly to Turkey, dude. I just don't want to be on a fucking plane that long. So I, going down to Mexico seems like a good idea. And I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do that. And I think that'll hold me off for at least two or three more years because I probably would have to go back at that point. Because I think, um, like, the hairs that they transplant into your uh, scalp, those are permanent. I don't know why they're permanent, but they're permanent. Uh, it's, like, I can't answer that for you, but I know, I know they're permanent based on everyone I've seen and they talk about it years later. I know that much. But, um, I, you know, the, the, the permanent hair that they replace in here, that's not, like, they didn't touch anything um, in the middle of my scalp, so the hair loss would eventually progress to the point where I'd be, like, now losing the hair back here, at which point I would have to go back and have them do it again. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm living my life pretty good. I, I'm not rich. I have excess income. I'm pretty frugal. I, I save a lot of money. Um, my my uh, significant other is the same way. Uh, she, you know, she goes to thrift stores. She doesn't spend a lot. So we, we have the money. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it seems it's doable. It's doable. Like if I had to go at the end of this year and then like another three years, the amount of money I'm able to save in three years, it's going to make it like nothing by then. And that's all right with me. Uh, I, I, I want to do the, uh, do this uh, just so I could, I could maintain my youthfulness and attractiveness a bit longer, which is, of course, vain. But you got to be honest, a lot of things we do are vain. Uh, vainness is found in the center of a lot of things. I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad quality to have. It, it could be if it's like... Uh, used opportunistically and you're you're taking advantage of others but no I, I mean I don't I don't see an issue with, with with doing something so you can look better it's like when girls get boob jobs like some guys are completely against the plastic work but uh I'm, I'm more okay with that because uh, they can't control how big their boobs are you know, they didn't get to pick the body they were born into so it's understandable why someone would want to augment that um, in the same breath, like, a lot of the types of women that choose to do that are not stable, long-term partners you'd want to have. But it's not the boob job doing that. It's just kind of the type of personalities that would want to seek it out. Um, which I wouldn't say is, like, a... I wouldn't say it's, like, a, a huge, significant portion of them, but I'd say it's more than half. Well, I guess that is kind of significant when you say it like that. But it's not, it's not like it's most of them, is what I'm saying. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't see an issue with that, and I, I'm gonna go down there. I, I hurt the process hurts way more than getting a fucking tattoo, but I could I could deal with that pain. You know, it's it'll be over, and then I I'll be left with the, the results of the procedure. So, yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, and you know, I don't know how much more it will it will progress throughout the the last 11 or 12 weeks of this prep. Because uh, I'm going to be more and more depleted. My body's not going to have the amount of nutrients it needs to recover. And I'm going to be taking probably more gear and stuff. So I, I don't know if, like, all the conditions that's going to put me in would accelerate it to a disturbing degree uh, within that short period of time. I don't know that much. But uh, I don't think it would be an issue, like, waiting another, what is that? I think another four months I could hold off. That would be so I finished the show in about another month because I got to do scheduling and stuff for it. And that should be, that, that's enough time. It's not, I don't think anything will be too far gone at that point. So that's at least my, my plan that I, I want to do. And um, yeah, I, I haven't really been looking a ton into scheduling it right now because I just want to cross that bridge when I get there. I, uh, I already got a lot of things I'm focusing on right now. Making these stupid videos is a, a smaller thing I'm focused on, but you know, I have my job, I have my bodybuilding. Um, and then I just have like, you know, trying to be a good partner uh, to my person. And that, you have to put effort into that. Um, but it's a lot of different things like that are, are taking more of a priority in my mental space right now than looking into that. But when the time comes, that'll be when I, I started immersing myself and spending hours uh, looking into everything to, you know, give me the final touches of confidence in my mind before I get it done. But yeah, like I, I, you know, I'm it's solidified in my mind that that's for sure a thing I'm gonna do. So I mean, unless I fuck myself up or something, I should be fine. Because if I get hurt again, that's uh, like 
over six grand out of my pocket in a surgery and then all the stuff I got to do after that's going to cost more money. You know, that, that would add up. So if, if there's like a unforeseen tragic event that happens, like that would definitely prevent me. But aside from that, no, I, I have full intentions of uh, seeing this through. And side effect wise, a lot of people, they have, you know, they, they have different expressions of that. Um, it's better to have something on the outside than the inside is what I say. So as much as uh, as much as all this stuff sucks like the hair loss and all that like you'd, you'd rather deal with that than have a, a major problem on the inside of your body because that's really gonna you know your people don't realize that their health matters until they they're in bad health then it's the only thing that matters so that's why regular blood work and just getting checkups on your heart and stuff periodically is the the move to do you want to be it's not gonna for certain you know, predict your mortality. People have gotten their blood work done and they die two days later and their blood work looks fine. But it's um, they're narrowing things out. So something can still happen, but if you see that your blood work looks good, well then you at least know that none of those things are wrong. Because if, if you see your blood work's fucked up, that's for sure something that's going to, that's going to affect your mortality and your overall health. That's for sure something that's going to do that. So, and you're you're um, narrowing out. I'm sorry. You're you're um, ridding yourself of a lot of different possibilities of things that can be fucked up if you get the blood work done. So it's it's creating a narrower window to look at of what could be wrong if something does happen in the future. And you're able to see trends over time. So if you get your blood work done initially, then you can see uh, you know you should be going two to three times a year, and you can see how things trend in different directions with certain numbers. Maybe your cholesterol. ALT, AST, whatever, like liver enzymes, any of that, and you can see it fluctuating up or down, and that'll give you an idea of something to keep an eye on, and some changes you might need to make with uh, content of your diet to try and fix that issue, and you can see next time you get blood work if that worked, but you're, you're basically, mo you're, you're, you're moderating an issue for yourself, because uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, so that means that if you're able to prevent something with little efforts, it's going to be a whole lot easier for you in your life than having to now try and fix a major issue once it's already there. That it's like you're not, you know, if you if you moderate everything and you're keeping a, you're overseeing yourself very well and responsibly, nothing's going to get too skewed off of off of the baseline that you can't uh, fix it before it's a problem. But once something's a problem. Now it takes a lot more effort and time to try and fix it. And it's simple, too. And I don't know why guys don't want to get blood work done. Like, even, I went through a private lab and I paid $300, which is, that's a lot of money. That makes me not want to do it. But I did that because I, I could have went to my general doctor and probably paid 30 bucks or 20 or 30 bucks after uh, insurance. But they weren't going to test my uh, sex hormones. They weren't going to test my testosterone and estrogen. And that's a... Uh, it's imperative to me that I get those things looked at too because if one number is off the values of the sex hormones might give me a better insight into why that is so that's why the past couple times I have got it done that way just so I can uh, be proactive but I wouldn't mind like mixing in the doctor visit blood work um, uh, visits instead of uh, paying 300 bucks every time because that adds up man so I think like every other time I'd probably want to go to the doctor, but uh, at least yearly I, I would want to get a full write-up because uh, the doctor, it, you know, I'm getting every, I'm getting most of what I need to see with the information, but I would also like to see the sex hormones, which they're not gonna, the insurance is not gonna approve that. It's America; they're not gonna approve you to, you know, check for recreational purposes. So uh, yeah, that's kind of what you got to deal with there, and. It, it honestly, you walk in and you walk out. It takes like 30 minutes to get it done. I, I don't, I don't know why guys don't do it. But you know, some guys don't want to see what their blood work looks like, and that's a whole different fucking stupid thing. Uh, because you could fix something, man. Like, why would you not want to fix something? I, I get that it sucks and uh, and all that, but you're giving yourself a lot worse problems later. And uh, I think it's it's that lack of sh of long term thinking that really digs people in a hole. And I. I I, I, I actually, no, I, I wholeheartedly believe it's that because, uh, you know, I, I was once in that irresponsible boat that I see many others in. Uh, impulsive, quick to make a decision. If I got excited about something, it had to be right now. You know, just a lot of impulsive decision-making, ignoring stuff. 
because I didn't want to put the attention into whatever I needed to. There's stuff like that. I get it. But as you mature, you you realize that it doesn't take that much extra effort to do things that can save, save you problems. It's like, uh, you know, if you get regular oil changes, your car can still break down. But there's a better chance that it won't if you get those oil changes. So it's kind of like that with your body. Just get your checkup, see what's going on, and you can make small changes and fix stuff. But uh, moving on from that topic, uh, prep-wise, I'm... Uh, I'm doing pretty good to be honest. I, you know, hunger is definitely it's kicked in. The, the hunger is definitely there. Uh, it's not bothering me too much. Like right now, let's let's see. I ate at uh, like 11:30 this morning. So between 2:30 and 3 is when I'd want to have my second meal. It's it's almost 3 o'clock right now. So nice fucking dumbass truck. Uh, I'm sorry. This, this guy wanted to play chicken with me. I don't know why. Um, but so, I, you know, I, I'm like, uh, it's like almost 3 o'clock right now, and I'm definitely feeling hungry, but I'm not, uh, it's not occupying my every thought. I'm just kind of aware that the feeling's there. Whereas I imagine once I'm uh, much more hungry later on, I'm probably going to be thinking about food a lot more. I think eventually you reach a point of starvation where it gets there. So that's sort of uh, what... I, you know, I, I like where I'm at right now, but I, I see it, it could be hard later. But I'm riding this wave out because if I could feel good up until the last six weeks, I'll take that. I'll take that every time. I could deal with six weeks of not feeling good. Could I deal with 13 weeks of not feeling good? I don't know. I think that'd be a lot harder. It might make me want to crack. Uh, but right now, it's very doable. Uh, and I actually enjoy the cardio. I've, I've reached the stage that I, I talk about so fondly where I kind of have endless energy right now. So I'm right, I'm like directly out of bed in the morning. A lot of the time now it's before my alarm even goes off. I'm waking up like 10 minutes before that, which is n never usually a thing for me. And I'm waking up amped to go do my cardio. And I'm, you know, super, I'm super awake at work right now. I, I've been super alert and awake since the day started. And it's kind of going to ride like that until the evening. But it, it is making me, it's a little bit harder for me to uh, fall asleep right away. So that uh, could definitely be hard. I don't want to use Z-Quill or anything too soon. Because that stuff's not good to be taken all the time. But yeah, it's, I mean, it is harder to fall asleep. But uh, it hasn't affected me so much so that it, it's fucking up the next day yet. Uh, but so the, the endless energy is great. It really is winding down. Difficult though. But I, I, I love the uh, endless energy because I actually end up, you know, I actually end up being more productive in a lot of different areas of my life because uh, also working my job, it kind of regulates my food intake a lot better because if I had a whole day off of work, I'm kind of laying around and like having idle time on my mind to uh, focus on being hungry too soon for like, ne like hung being hungry way too soon for the next meal. Uh, but when I'm at work, I'm, I'm at least focused enough that I look down at the clock and I'm like, oh, it's time to eat again. Like I wasn't even concerned about it yet. And that's good for me. So it, it's prompted me to want to sign up for like an extra, an extra day at work for overtime because it's regulating me very well right now. But I also have to coordinate that with um, my significant other because sometimes she doesn't work on the weekend and that's kind of our quality time uh, portion of the week. So. Unless she's also working on a Saturday, I don't want to work on Saturday. I don't want to uh, affect our quality time together. Um, an extra 400 bucks is not worth that. But it is it is nice when things line up and I get to do it. And I, I don't feel bothered or stressed or, or getting upset at work. I'm just kind of chill. I'm kind of cool about it. Uh, like obviously, that trucker back there got me a little annoyed. But like that, that's no sweat off my back. It's not like I'm getting I'm getting all worked up in management and stuff and wanting to go in there screaming. None of that. So very, very, very chill. And I, I'd like to ride it out that way because I'm gonna I'm gonna have to regulate myself a lot better as uh, the prep continues. I think probably the six week out mark is when I'm really gonna be feeling it because it it will make me quicker to get annoyed and agitated with uh, you know especially around my my significant other. 
just because uh, I've been starving for so for so long has kind of you know put me on a heightened a heightened level of uh, alertness. And you're you're going to take things the wrong way and probably hear stuff in a different tone than was actually said. So you gotta you know, really regulate yourself and not have any outbursts or just you know bite your tongue and uh, shake it off. You don't want to you don't want to take a bad mood a bad mood out on someone around you that you care about. So I think I will have to like more consciously uh, regulate myself later on. Right now things are perfect though. I mean I mean there's no fights or anything, but I, I imagine later on in the process as things get more grueling. It's definitely going to put me in that kind of spot. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm just trying my best uh, to navigate all the different aspects of uh, what I'm doing here. But it, everything's very manageable, and I've, I've organized my life so that it would be. It's not like I'm having surprise things, take extra amounts of time out of my day. Everything's very controlled and balanced out. I have enough time to allocate towards the things I need to. So it, I've strategically set myself up to be in this position, which is it's it's a hard thing to do um, at first, but I've I've gotten very good at it. I I don't have time for bullshit in my my daily routine, whether that be people that want to annoy me and talk to me too much, or uh, you know just uh, unnecessary things that people want to push onto me. You know, some people want you to do their responsibilities for them. I just kindly decline all that, and I, I keep my energy very conserved for what I need to. I would say, if anything, like for my job, it's it's fizzling out a little bit of my energy throughout the day, but if anything, it's kind of dwindling my alertness. Because I, I have to keep, like, the, the job itself, driving a truck, it's not mentally stimulating, but it is mentally exhausting. Because I, I have to keep a low level of focus at all times on the road in front of me like I am right now. And keeping that low level of focus extended out for an eight-hour period, you know, that's going to make you a little, a little you know, worn out, at least mentally in that way. So that's why, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts and stuff to make mentally stimulate myself in another way. But like, yeah, what I'm, what I'm saying is, it, it will wear you out in that manner. So it, the work's a little bit different, but then the gym, uh, I'm probably expending most of my energy there, but I'm enjoying it the entire time. And then with my my uh, significant other, uh, she gets the rest of it. So uh, you know, there's not really much time for for anything else. Uh, probably, and sometimes too when we're hanging out, I just kind of want to be on my phone and play a game or something. And she's uh, pretty uh, receptive to that. She she doesn't get upset. She might say something if I do it too much, but if she has to say something, she's probably right. So I'll just put it down. But uh, yeah, just. It's not, nothing too bad. I, I do feel bad when I, I kind of feel like too mentally checked out to be present and engaged in, in, uh, when I'm interacting with her. But it's not like that's happening all the time. I just, I, I, I do, uh, I reflect a lot and I feel bad about little things or li- little behaviors that bug me, like an interaction that didn't go the way I hoped it would. Stuff like that might stay on my mind for a little bit. It definitely does with my significant other because she's the most important to me so I have to you know I, I, I have to use all that but the reflection time it, it gives you time to uh, correct yourself for the future because you, you never really truly reflected on anything if you're gonna keep it going so uh, yeah like I, I just avoid certain situations that made me feel uncomfortable in the future and I, I keep uh, navigating and, and swimming through everything that way just so I have a more pleasant time in my life. I, I enjoy being happy now. I, I know I've talked before in other videos, I spent a lot of my life not being happy, not, not allowing myself to be happy. But I, I enjoy it so much now, so I just do everything I can to maintain a steady level of that. I, I have a lot of wisdom from a lot of mistakes I made, like drug addiction, for example. That's why I don't want, a, uh, I don't want an extreme amount of happiness all at once. Some people are thrill seekers in that way. And it's really bad because you're just being a junkie at that point. Really, you're going to burn yourself out and probably put yourself in very, uh, like, sporadic, uh, uncontrolled situations if you're trying to feel extreme versions of things all the time. So I, the best thing is just a steady feeling of, of being fine. Um, so that, that way you could feel great for the longest period possible. And everything just feels upbeat and nice. It's not like I need to feel like I just won the lottery every day. If you chase that kind of high, 
you're gonna end up not feeling like that at all. You're gonna feel the opposite. And imagine feeling the opposite of feeling like you just won the lottery. Like the true opposite of that. That's how you're gonna feel. You wanna feel that bad? I don't wanna feel that bad. I have felt that bad. I put myself in positions where I've caused myself to feel that bad. I don't ever wanna feel that bad again. That's terrible. Did I have a lot of fun when I did drugs? Hell yeah, I did. Ton of fun. Did I have the worst moments of my life when I took them? Absolutely. And those worst times of my life are not worth any of those good times. Sure, there's a fun story to tell here or there or something to relate to or the wisdom I have right now, but I, I wish I could have I could have learned these lessons without experiencing all that shit because it's terrible. It takes a long time to get over stuff and to grow from it truly. To truly grow, not just say you have. To do all that and improve... like. You could avoid the problems in the first place if you you have a little bit of foresight and you can think a little bit. But of course, I was a younger guy that did, that thought he knew everything but didn't think very much. So yeah, I put myself in bad situations where I felt terrible, and I don't ever want to feel that way again. And the worst part about feeling terrible like that is you were chasing a high, like you were chasing a high that's so unrelated to that it's the opposite of it you were chasing that and you got you got fucked over along the way and now you feel the worst you ever have so don't don't involve yourself in things that are going to make you feel that way just a steady stream of feeling great that'll that'll carry you a very long way and it'll make you less likely to be negative because if you feel great for a long period of time it kind of it kind of cements that into your personality and your character uh, of who you are. It definitely has for me, and I, I believe it, it does for other people too when, once they actually put the the effort in, in, into growing. It's hard to. You have, you have the all the little inner workings of daily life playing against you, and it's hard to want to uh, improve or, or dedicate specific time with a clear head to um, correcting and, and, and improving behaviors you have. It's hard to do, and a lot of people, they might read books but not really absorb it, or they don't do any of that at all, and they just live their life on autopilot. Uh, these people tend to be like repeat offenders of, of uh, those who, who run into like uh, drastic, I'm trying to think of a good word for it, like drastic, just I guess drastic extreme situations, you know? Like someone who's always in a big confrontation all the time and they're always getting worked up. They always have something going on. Those kinds of people. That's what you're setting yourself up for, to be one of those kinds of people. And no one likes them. No one likes them. Some people might humor them because uh, they want to hear some gossip uh, to juice up their life a little bit. But in general, no one likes being around those people. And uh, those people, get uh, they get along with the gossipers very well because they'll tell a story to anyone who will listen. So, you know, two different groups of shithead people, they find each other, and they, they produce more of what they are. But yeah, I, so, yeah, I, I don't think I have all the answers figured out, but I at least have the things I'm talking about figured out. And I think a lot of people could benefit from a little bit more mindfulness and trying to just implement, or, or I, I guess, um, conduct yourself in a way where you're going to feel more fulfilled um, on a deep internal level. Fulfillment's not having like some crazy string of luck or anything like that or the love of your life says yes to you. No, right? I'm just talking about like consistent, steady, daily efforts that go into giving yourself a better life to live overall. The little things add up. If you do a lot of the little things right, a lot of the big things are going to be much clearer for you. So anyway, guys... Uh, thanks for listening, if you have, for this very long 34-minute video. I'm going to catch you guys later. I'll see you on the next one. I'm going to get back to work.